everybody and welcome to today's Lego Technic video. Over the last few weeks I've been presenting different designs for various two-speed automatic gearboxes and in fact last week I presented one of these gearboxes implemented inside of an automatic two-speed uh, car. Now unfortunately this car didn't work as expected. Uh, I ended up discovering that there's, in fact there's a lot of power and torque loss inside of the gearbox that I wasn't expecting. That made me realize I really need to understand uh, torque and power a lot more rather than just gearing ratios so what I decided to do is to study torque and power and today I'm going to be presenting to you some of my discoveries. So what is torque anyway? So one way of thinking of torque is the amount of force that an axle is being rotated by. So for example I've got a setup like this if I crank the handle then this axle here that the uh, gear is on is being rotated and if I hold that gear I, you know, I need a certain amount of force to rotate that axle around and that force on that axle is effectively the torque. Now if I've got a, um, a long crank like this then it's easier to ro rotate the axle like you need less force in terms of pushing because of the distance away from the axle and that's creating more leverage. On the other hand if I use a, a shorter crank then I'd need more force to create the same amount of torque. So Alright if you look at the formal definition of torque if we draw this uh, crank handle like that uh, well this is the axis and then we've got the crank handle then we're applying a certain amount of force F to the handle at a perpendicular angle uh, to the crank then what we're going to find is that axle is going to rotate and it's going to have a certain amount of uh, torque on it and that torque on the axle is defined as the force times the distance where the distance is the distance from the axle to the point of where the force is being applied so that's D there and that is measured in Newton meters so this is the uh, formal de definition of torque, so you can see that it's the force times the distance. So what we can see is that we can get the same torque by applying a smaller force to a larger distance or a larger force to a smaller distance and still create the uh, same amount of torque. So for example in this case we've got a, if we want to create the same amount of torque with the shorter crank handle we need more force and with the larger one we've got more distance so we actually need less force to generate the same amount of torque. Okay, so that's the definition of torque. Now once we start actually cranking the handle and resisting that torque, we're actually expending uh, energy and doing work. And in terms of physics, we can uh, calculate the amount of work being done. Work is simply the force that's being applied times the distance we're traveling. Now in this case, as we're going around in a circle like this, the amount of work being done doing one revolution is the force times the distance that that end of that handle is traveling uh, where the force is being applied. So the uh, distance being traveled is in fact the circumference of a circle and the circumference of a circle is 2 pi times the distance or the radius of that circle. So the work being done is force times 2 pi d and if we look at that we've got force times d over there which is the same as the torque. So we can write this as 2 pi times the torque and that is measured in uh, joules. And then from that we can calculate the power being done. So power is the energy per second that we're doing. So if we calculate the number of uh, revolutions per second we're doing, which is the distance being travelled per second, then we can say that the power is 2 pi times the torque times R, which is the number of revolutions per second that we are rotating at. So that gives us joules per second. So that gives us the overall power that's being expended per second or energy per second uh, when we're rotating the handle uh, against the torque of torque. Alright, so now that I understood torque and power better, what I started looking at was the relationship uh, between the torque and the revolutions per minute of um, electric motors in LEGO. So this plot here is for a large power functions motor and what it shows is the relationship, like I said, between the torque along the x-axis and the revolutions per minute on the uh, blue line here. What it's showing us is that uh, when there's um, you know, zero torque being applied then we get uh, 380 revolutions per minute. However as the torque increases or the load on the motor increases in fact uh, 
the speed and motor decreases and you've probably all experienced this in your own creations and what you find is, is as um, there's more and more loading eventually the speed goes to zero so if you think back to the power equation and that power equation relates the torque and the speed to the overall power and what that means is, is that when the torque is zero in fact the power being output by the motor or the work being done by the motor is in fact uh, zero because zero times the revolutions uh, per second or per minute in this case is equal to zero and of course once the torque is high enough then the revolutions go to zero even though the torque's high the revolutions are zero then that means the power is zero as well so what that means is that this end of the curve uh, there's actually zero power being uh, done or zero work being done and this end of the curve is zero as well so what that means is in between there must be a peak uh, where the power output of the motor is at a maximum. Now to work out where the power is at peak we can write down the power as uh, before it is equal to 2 pi times the rotational speed which is this axis here times the torque. Now so what we can do is for example model this line here uh, by a linear line so we can say that the rotational speed is given by a times the torque plus b where a and b are two parameters that determine that linear line uh, we can then write that that is equal to 2 pi times a torque plus b times the torque so what we find is that the power is 2 pi times a torque squared plus b times the torque where a and b are parameters for our line uh, now if we want to find out the uh, peak power where it's a maximum what we need to do is to uh, take the derivative of P relative to the torque so dP dt which is equal to 2 pi times the, the derivative of A to tor squared it's just 2 A tor plus B and then we need to set the derivative to zero in order to find the maximum and we need to solve that equation so if we say, uh, solve this equation for tor, what we find it is just simply equal to minus b over 2a. So that gives us the point at which the power is the maximum. Now what should a and b be? Well in order to um, model that line we can put b which is the intercept over here which is about 380. So b is approximately equal to 380 uh, if you work at A it's the slope of the line uh, it's approximately minus 20 so if we put those two numbers into our equation we get 380 divided by minus 20 uh, divided by 2 which gives us a torque of about 9.5 so 9.5 is the point at which this power is the maximum which is about at uh, say about 220 revolutions per minute so that shows you that in fact the best place to run your motor in order to get the most power out of your motor would be at that nine and a half torque or about 220 revolutions per minute so I thought that was a really interesting result about the peak power of a motor so that tells me this motor should really be run at around 220 rpm to get the maximum power output now the other issue with this particular design is the location of the torque detection mechanism because in this case I put it on the main axle of the motor where the speed is the highest uh, this uh, torque detection mechanism is effectively producing a counter torque on that axle and the power loss in this mechanism is uh, as per the equations proportional to the torque on this times the speed of the motor so if that's running around 220 rpm and there's a certain amount of torque on this torque detection mechanism then the loss in terms of power is the product or proportional to the product of the speed of the motor times that uh, the torque detection uh, mechanism so that's introducing a lot of power loss so i've been trying to think of ways to mitigate that particular issue so one idea i had to try and mitigate the power loss due to the torque detector was to split the input into two different paths so for example what I could do, I could take the input I over here, so that's speed I I can then create another path like this with a gearing ratio of A and then another path with a gearing ratio of B and then I could add those two up with a differential to create an overall output speed of O
Now by having two different paths like this, what that means is that the power that's being transferred from input to output takes two different paths. So some of the power will go along this path, some of the power will go along the bottom path. Then obviously if A and B are equal, then it's symmetrical, and we're going to get half the power that way and half the power that way. But if A and B are not equal, then what is that percentage of power going along path A? Well, we can work that out. So if we say this here is speed X and this is speed Y, uh, and this is speed O, then what we find is that the overall output speed relative to the input speed or the overall gearing ratio is just given by A plus B over 2. Uh, and if we have a torque out here of TO, uh, then what we find is that the torque X, so the torque at point X, is in fact equal to half of the output torque due to the differential. What the differential does is actually split the two torques between at the output between the two inputs so we've got torque x equals torque output over 2 uh, so if we work out the power at x which is the power being transferred along the top path uh, due to the power equation we've got 2 pi times the speed now the speed is i times a times the torque at x and the torque at x is simply the torque at the output divided by 2. Now if we look at the power at the output, PO, it is simply equal to 2 pi times the speed, which is O, but the speed at O is A plus B over 2 times I times the output torque. Now, if we look at the ratio of Px to Po, we find these equations uh, have a lot of simplifications because of the common factors. If we cancel all those out, we find that Px over Po is simply to A over A plus B. So that gives us the overall ratio of the power going along the top half. So it's simply A over A plus B. So for example, if we set A to say 9 and b equal to 1 then we get 9 out of uh, 10 so 90% of the power will go along path a and 10% of the power along path b so we can use this diagram and equation to reduce the amount of losses due to the torque detector and that's simply by putting the torque detector in the path where there's the least amount of power so obviously if the torque detector is reducing the power and reducing counter torques then by putting it on the path where there's the least amount of power transfer, that means there's going to be the smallest amount of losses. So for example, if we make 9% of the power go along path A and 10% along path B and we put the torque detector in this location here, then the most uh, power that can be lost, even if the detector took up all the power, would be 10%. And by doing it that way, we can uh, create a design where the, we can still detect torque, but keep the losses at a minimum. Okay, so here's an experimental setup to test this idea. So what I've got over here is a 9 volt power supply that is connected to my large motor. That large motor is going through a 7 to 15 gearing ratio to drive the axle that's got a pulley on it. Pulley's got a bit of string. That string is connected to a pair of luggage scales that are connected to some rubber bands. So we're going to test to see the maximum pulling power of this setup. Okay, let's try it. that it can pull about 2.5 kilograms that's pretty good okay now i've got the same setup except i've added the torque detector at the beginning of the overall setup so straight to the motor we've got our torque detector mechanism we're still going through the same uh, 7 to 15 uh, gearing ratio and then we're going to test to see how much power we've got including the uh, torque detector so let's try that experiment. So we've got that set to zero and let's go and look at that. Look at the difference. 1.5 kilograms versus 2.5. So we've lost at least 40% of our power just in that torque detection mechanism. Now in this setup I've got the split path torque detector, so what I've got now is our motor, we've got two paths, one direct path going straight to the output and then I've got a secondary path uh, which has got the torque detector and then feeds back uh, 
through this uh, summing differential like uh, we talked about in the uh, theory. Now this has got the same gearing ratio of 7 15th as the other setup, so we're going to compare the two. So let's look at the amount of torque we can produce. Let's go. And look at that. 2.4. The other one uh, without any uh, torque detection or differential, it was 2.5. So the power loss is very minimal, uh, maybe about 10%. Uh, I think this is a fantastic result, uh, this is showing a lot of promise and I think we're one step closer to creating an automatic two speed gearbox that will actually work. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video and please like and subscribe.